live? Are we already live? Hello, everybody. <laughs> so hi to those of you in the room, and hi to those of you uh, watching online. Um, it looks like, in fact, we will only have three sessions um, because we haven't heard from uh, Zahn Bester, who is going to deliver the final fourth uh, presentation. So um, we have um, Ivana Michinova here in person, and then we should have two people coming in uh, through Zoom, and I'll introduce them when they appear. In the meantime, uh, take it away, yeah. Ivana. Thank Thanks. you for the floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, hello everyone. Um, before we start, I need to advise you that the title that you see on the screen and the title you saw on the uh, on the door is slightly different because when I sent my abstract in January. I was planning research on a textbook and how they promote a surface or deep learning strategies. But because of the lockdown, I couldn't run that research. But I collected information from students' feedback on writing an essay. So hopefully this will compensate that, you know, <laughs> that gap uh, between the title in original brochure and what I'm going to talk about today. Um, as the chair said, uh, uh, I'm based at University College of Business in Prague. Uh, this is a private uh, college. Uh, we have bachelor degrees and master degrees, uh, mainly in tourism, then in management of aviation, and there are new programs such as human resources. But uh, my talk. Uh, um, um, draws and in information from students in tourism in their final year when they are requested to write a case study. Um, our previous experience with writing in, in the first year and in the second year is quite satisfying because most of the writing tasks are quite practical. The students are asked to design their own product or design their own business plan or simply, you know, to do something that is very practical and personal. But the, the third year actually moves on and wants students to be more theoretically grounded. So we think that a case study is a good way how to connect, connect theory and practice. But there are quite many problems in, in that. Obviously, some students do very well on these tasks and some students uh, seem not to cope with it that well. So let's move on um, to the overview of my study. Okay, so first I would like to give you a short overview of study strategies, but very briefly. And then uh, I want to argue that essay writing could be seen as an indicator of student strategies, and it's not necessary to do something that uh, draws on really theoretic theory or psychometric uh, inventories that can be very large and difficult to employ in our language classes. And uh, uh, my interest in this talk is uh, what classroom practices in writing help to promote deep learning strategies or deep approaches to study and which can lead to unhealthy strategies, for example plagiarism. And the question we asked in students' feedback was like, what essay do you consider meaningful? What is meaningful writing for you? And in the end, I would like to mention some te uh, teaching implications uh, that can be useful in our environment, in our setting. Maybe in your in my, uh, environment, it wouldn't be that applicable, but I hope that you will find some inspiration from this and making some connections, how to close that gap between students' feedback and teachers' observations. Um, first, I want to think uh, for a while, what type of students are you teaching? Do you have Adrian and Adam? And these students do their task always in time, and they submit their essays in almost perfect like quality. And when you read them, you see that there is a nice structure, you understand the ideas, they follow it, they support each other, and, and in all, all, all in all, it makes a good reading or interesting reading. And when there are some small problems, and when you suggest that students might do something differently, students benefit from this feedback. 
On the other hand, and this is a really an extreme, and between these two types of students, there is a long and, and wide continuum of, of different types of students with different motivations, personalities, study styles, etc., etc. We have students, I call them we and Avi. Why do you think I created or I invented these, I hope, not existing names? But I know that today people can, can be very creative and find out very, uh, yeah, funny, sounds very offensive, simply funny names for their babies. So we as a substitution for weak students. I hate labeling, but you know, Abby as a description for students who are somehow avoided learning. So we and Avi, they submit written assignments, usually late or never or in low quality. And when you read it, it makes a sad reading. It reminds you a collage of ideas that are not connected with each other. And it's difficult to help students to make it better. And when you try, you see that these students cannot benefit from your feedback or other people's feedback like their peers because they lack the background knowledge or skills in writing or there is minimum of motivation because some of those students, and again, not all of them, I'm not suggesting that the picture is that simple or black and white, these students want to pass exams with minimal efforts. So, <laughs> what type of students are you actually teaching? I would, I, I think that all of them, all of them also, many, many types of students in between uh, these two extremes, as I said. The current line of pedagogy or language pedagogy suggests that we should focus on effective teaching and learning. Uh, that's very nice to say, easy to say, but difficult to do, because as I said, we have to deal with all those differences in students. Um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, we, we uh, draw our writing around a case study, and the inspiration from, uh, comes from Yeri Marish, who wrote a very uh, detailed summary how complicated it is actually to write a good case study. So now we understand that we actually assign students with a task that could be somehow beyond their skills. But on the other end, we believe that they have lots of experience from their disciplinary subjects. So actually our expectations used to be that the students know very well how to write a case study, but the reality is different or can be different. The second inspiration comes from Bexan Tang, um, who focus on quality teaching in higher education. And they suggest that we should provide maximum of guidance, information, and support throughout the writing process. So not just you know, assign the task and then look at, at the product, because we expect that the students already know how to write. So this is, uh, the, this is the second assumption. And the last assumption is that uh, some students, even in the third year, may, uh, may have the same skills they came um, to university with, like you know, secondary school study skills. And again, how can we Id identify very quickly these students and come up with some strategies to close the gap? Hmm. The first thing is that we can use the theory and psychometric research, but as I said, these inventories are difficult uh, to adapt or to, to adopt in our language classes because they are too general. They are meant for everybody, not, but not for your schools, uh, not for your students. So again, I suggest that we should use a classroom practice analysis and focus on what is not working that well in your classes and analyze the problem. So in this case, we analyze student feedback on writing assignments. And we also analyze our assessment practices and, uh, and, and classroom practices as well. Um, so we can also say that essay or writing an essay could be seen as the lens of student strategies. Uh, this is the learning situation that has the power to magnify all the issues, positive ones, negative ones, but it simply makes it more visible when you see students in the, in the learning process. 
As I said earlier, we focus on the question what essays are meaningful for students, and we ask them to write down at least three things they think uh, are useful for them or they liked in uh, writing sessions. At this moment, I have to say that we usually spend only two or two and a half sessions throughout the term because the course has to cover uh, other topics apart from writing. And also we ask students what things they would like to improve or change. And now you can see the results of student feedback versus observed strategies by me as the teacher. When you look on the left uh, column of, of the screen, you can see that the student feedback is, sorry, one, well, one slide back, backwards. Um, what you see here are mostly positive things a student mentioned in their feedback, like uh, writing an essay can be meaningful when the topic is interesting, when it's personal, or when it's challenging some traditional views so they feel like they are bringing something, something new or important. Another feedback is about the assignments. Students appreciate when the assignment is uh, designed as a series of questions, some like leading questions, helping them to imagine what the correct or expected structure of a case study is about, like asking them, okay, so set out your problem, explain the background, where does the, does the problem come from, what happened like five years ago, why the situation has changed or hasn't changed. So these helpful questions to imagine what, what, uh, what could help them in that, for example, research or data analysis. Uh, another issue deals with teachers' uh, feedback. Students really appreciate when we read their essays and provide comments. Actually, it doesn't happen always. Uh, to be honest, even I sometimes don't have enough time to read all the essays, especially when they arrive late. So it's just, you know, there is another workload, uh, other tasks, so I just, you know, briefly look at it and say, it's okay, yeah, I don't have time, being completely honest. Um, other teachers, well, do, do, do different things. And uh, one more comment about uh, uh, teacher assessment is that if we write a comment, it must be very specific, clear, not vague. When I write, use another word, not this one, this is not a good word. For example, when I write, this is a B1 word, you should be using like, you know, uh, better words, nicer words from B2. Students have no idea what it means, but this is what I saw in, t in students' feedback. And the last one, sometimes students don't understand why writing is useful that writing is a transferable scale and whatever they, they learn in English writing classes, they can use, for example, when writing a Czech seminar paper or a bachelor thesis in Czech because the questions of style, paragraphing, layout, this is everything transferable. Now let's move on to the negative feedback, which I have just, you know, uh, briefly designed. Student feedback mentions most often the problem of their third year students. They complain about coursework overload in other classes, plus the language classes. Students, for example, mention they have to write an essay that is 20 pages long for other classes, and it's not just one of them. Plus, it's writing their own bachelor's thesis, plus, getting ready for the final exam. So the whole third year is a stressful year. So we should understand that there is a lot of pressure on them and we should be somehow fair with that, how much work we can actually impose on them. Uh, another complaint comes from the problem of essay assignments, saying that they are not clear enough. And that's true because the third year assignment is very free. It's trends in tourism. And below that is like, you know, apply this uh, or choose a particular area of trends in tourism, apply it on your chosen region or on your cho chosen tourism attraction or a problem and write a case study. 
So students think that, or some students think that this is not good enough, or it should be developed or elaborated more, as I mentioned earlier, giving them some leading questions. Some teachers, uh, some students complain it's hard to know what pleases their teacher. <laughs> like, we are not readable, or they believe that we are subjective in our assessments. We have assessment rubrics, mm, but they are quite like, you know, mm, simple, simply worded, not explained in details. And again, we are language teachers, so we are using rubrics and we know what is behind them, but our students don't. So providing them some, for example, samples of writing with some problems and helping them to understand what is the problem with content or what is the problem with the uh, comprehension or accuracy or layout structure, then it would be better for students. Also, students are not happy about clear feedback. This is what I have mentioned earlier. There is a problem with low consistency of assessment among teachers and lack of motivation. How this can be translated into student strategies? Whatever we do in classes have usually a direct response in students' behavior in the strategies they adopt. So if the assignment is not clear enough, or if there is too much work overload or coursework, students resort to plagiarism. Or there is a high proportion of reproduction of theoretical knowledge, or there is a lack of their own voice, um, argumentation, etc., etc. Of course, we should understand that they may struggle with our deadlines, because this is us who set up the deadlines, not them, and we don't know what, what else is happening outside our language classes. Plus, they resort to using hidden curriculum. Hidden curriculum are so-called urban legends, but university urban legends. So students spend a lot of time on trying to find out how teachers assess what they like, what they hate, just to be like more certain about uh, the final result. And to summarize uh, the problem, I would like to suggest some, some implications for teaching how to improve it. The theory says and the practice says that we should align assignments and assessment practices. So as I mentioned earlier, we can do a lot. Uh, we can teach more how to write a good case study, not in writing classes, but we can design our previous classes, for example, on theoretical problems as case studies. And this is a way how to show students uh, what a case study needs and when it works, when it's written well. We should also uh, be more consistent in our assessments. We should be more clear how we assess and what it needs to write a good case study. And also we could be using a wider choice of uh, classroom practices. Plus, for example, using peer feedback or integrate essay writing into our classes when we, for example, allocate five minutes uh, in which students can share their first like preliminary ideas on their topics or how much they have done, what they have researched so far. This, I believe, and uh, I'm going to test it throughout the next term, this might help to sort out some of the, some of the problems uh, especially in students who are still struggling with, with their study skills. And what we could do is to annotate our topics with leading questions or examples, simply provide them with more information to, so that the whole idea of a case study or writing in the final year becomes more clear for everybody. Thank you. These are the resources, and uh, uh, I hope to hear some of your questions or suggestions, if you have any. If you can share your experience from your writing classes, that would be really a pleasure. So thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you, Ivana. And I'm going to sit here and see if there's any. Uh, sure. And maybe you can have a seat if you like. I'll see if there's any uh, questions online. And of course, we can open it up to any questions here.
semester, uh, we said that uh, if the tasks, the writing tasks, uh, tend to be vague, uh, yeah. how would you narrow down the descriptions, or what do you think we should provide? Mm -hmm. Um, actually, we would like to keep the format of a case study because we believe that like it's a fitting format for the final year students. Like we shouldn't like you know go down. Uh, but as I said, we would like to annotate uh, th th this topic with more classroom practice, like to give them a, an idea what it means to write a good case study, and annotate it with questions, as I said. So begin with. Um, uh, identifying your problem, what do you want to deal with, uh, research, um, research literature, uh, write a summary of that literature, are there any statements that are helpful or unhelpful or support your like preliminary idea what the problem is about, uh, then look at the data, what kind of data uh, might help you to, to make your, to build your argument. Um, then offer consultations, of course, yeah. This is what we do, but uh, not many students actually see us uh, during our consult, uh, our office rooms. Um, I've never seen a student, apart from bachelor thesis students, in my office hours, never. Unless there is a problem with their, like, you know, mark, <laughs> uh, low attendance, then they are ready to come and so they want to discuss how, how they can compensate the lack of attendance or the lack of task. But they never arrive with questions, you know, look at my, you know, you know draft and what do you think? And then they never send it even, like, uh, by email. So, also this is a problem, lack of communication. Yeah. I'm not sure if I answered your question because um, maybe I have moved too far from it. Actually, the lack of interest from the students. Is what lack of interest. Yeah, yeah, of course. It, you know, sometimes it's the student's own decision. It's their final year, and they need to already decide when they want to move. If they want to move on master's program, then the requirements would be higher, and they need to expect that something like that will happen in the future. But if they want to move on to, to the labor market, well, and many of them do. So obviously they are not going to write a case study, for example, being a manager of a small, I don't know, or maybe they should, maybe it would help them because um, a case study is an excellent tool for teaching as well. An excellent one. Thank you. Do you have any experience with writing case studies in your subjects or in your areas? I would like just to thank you for this very interesting uh, paper. And uh, your texting is very, very important as the introduction, the introductory lessons at the beginning of the semester. It, it's not only about uh, giving them an assignment and writing an essay, but it's going to also with preparation of uh, presentations and so on and so on. So, First, uh, maybe two, three lessons are very, very important to give students some, some introduction to all the genres uh, and to explain to them what we want from them. Absolutely. To give them examples, and see, to be very clear. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Sometimes we have some expectations that students already know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we expect, you know, the final year. So they have been through, through it, yeah. So, uh, yeah, thank you. No question from, from the chat? No, nobody on the chat. We still have a few minutes before from the next speech. Czech students, I would say Czech students, Czech schooling doesn't really focus on writing up till university, I'm fair. Yeah, That's the main yeah, yeah, writing is, is neglected. This, this is my feeling. Mm. Um, and they don't know how. No, no, they don't have a clue, uh, but, you know, the, um, my feeling is that some of the Czech students have received that maturita training, and this is the training that is based on somehow, like, product, um, product, um, yeah, final result. product, final yeah. Result. yeah, final result, yeah. but the process of writing is not taught 
So students only know what is the, 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 the outcome of their process, but they uh, do not get any training how to write a paragraph. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my experience even from my previous, uh, uh, from my previous university, Charles University, uh, that students arrive with very low developed skills in writing and we have to teach them from scratch. But in the previous uh, work, we had more time to spend on writing. Now we teach 12 sessions a year, and we have to cover other agenda that is prescribed by the curriculum. So there are also like organization limitations for writing. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be excellent if we had a foundation course on writing for the first year students. But this is a completely naive and ideal idea because with the number of students we have in the first year, many of them disappearing, dropping out. It seems like, you know, I don't know, not very effective way. So. To me, it's all, it's all connected and I don't know if that's your experience as well, but to me, you could connect it all to I would say meta-language, language about writing. And so often we feel like our focus is to teach language, right? Like as, as like the, con the content of text, what are the texts, what are the texts meaning, what are they saying? But um, we don't often teach the language to talk about the text. And so maybe that's one reason, for example, why the students are also reluctant to come and talk to you about their text. They may not even have the vocabulary to, to talk about it, right? Or um, what else was I going to say? The um, well, the yeah, and the or the ability, the, the the writing process, the ability to talk about that and share that, right? Mm -hmm. um, you need also words. Sure, for that. sure. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yesterday when you were giving uh, a talk about writing lab. I think that the, these type of pro problems you are facing uh, when it's the problem that we're arrive. facing. It's also hopefully a solution to the problems <laughs> a because uh -huh. it's a place uh -huh. where students can come yeah. and talk yeah. about their yeah. their writing. Yeah. So that's the hope. Yeah. So integrating pros possibly skills is also a solution. So when we deal with with some reading passage. It might be good when we focus, you know, how the offer started, uh, the whole article, and why, and how effective is, is that introduction, and why the conclusion is, uh, is structured as this, and again, how does it help uh, the understanding of students or the understanding of the text. So integrating all skills would be a good solution. And I think it's also a difference of the level of schools they studied before coming to university. And I, I'm afraid that uh, there are not many schools they concentrated on, on writing. So I know that even for my children, of uh, all generation younger, mm -hmm. generation Z, we heard about this today, uh, I don't think they are used to write anything. They are used to download parts of text from the internet. Mm -hmm. and they the press of essays and uh, talks at school. They just download messages and put them together. And I was very surprised when my daughter asked me to read her bachelor thesis. And she asked me to read it because she was afraid of some grammatical problems and mistakes. But there were no grammatical mistakes, but there were table structures of sentences. The beginning of the sentence was uh, introducing something, but there was no end, no, no result. Yeah. In one sentence. Yeah, yeah so. absolutely. So actually what you're suggesting uh, is that um, it doesn't matter in which language you are writing, but the writing skills become highlighted or the problems with it will be uh, highlighted in, in, all, in all languages. Hmm. Plus, as you said, students um, usually write in bullet points. <laughs> this is really, they started as a draft and sometimes they believe that like this is enough, like, you know, having those bullet points, like, like in PowerPoint presentations. And when I say, okay, but I don't understand how these ideas are connected. Is it a causal relationship? Or is it just some coincidence? So what is the relationship? You need to explain it in your words. Otherwise, I have no idea where you are heading to. So it's, it's a 
complicated issue and complex. Yeah, and complex. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Rana. you. Thank you for your attention. You've been a lovely audience.